Hey, welcome to the Curious Native Podcast. I'm your host, Huna Smock at the end. And in today's episode, we will be taking a little look at a very famous Hawaiian activist, Heyuani K. Trask, and her life and legacy as a Hawaiian activist and indigenous woman. So if you're interested in that, please keep on listening. You know, usually... Usually I just jump right in, but I just wanted to say for a minute here, I did want to let you guys know that I am working on having a guest on the podcast, and, you know, that that is a work in progress. I won't say who it is yet until it is official, just to not get any, you know, get any hopes up, but that is something I am currently working towards accomplishing, is having guests on, and, um... I did want to say something too, you know, maybe sometime in the future, I don't know if it'll be this season, maybe next season, but I do want to get maybe a co-host to have somebody bounce off, you know, back and forth with, because it it is a little hard to sit here by myself and to talk about these things because, you know, it's only me, so I only have a certain amount of opinions that I could say, and then that's why usually episodes are a bit shorter because I... I don't want to just add on a bunch of nonsense that doesn't need to be there unless I have somebody else there to bounce back and forth on and to keep, you know, so we keep each other in line so we just don't go off course. Because I have edited out so many times where I've gone off course. That's why I could have a whole 10 minute round, uh, you know, a whole 10 minute, you know, whole speech. And it gets cut out of the episode because it has nothing to do with the episode. I just go on tangents. And then that's 10 minutes of the episode gone. So you only get left with like 15 so, you know, that's why I just wanted to talk about that a tiny bit. And I did want to say that um, my episode on hippies and cultural appropriation, it's doing really well, and I've gotten a lot of good feedback on it. Um, people have said that, you know, I'm really they're really happy that I touched on the appropriation of indigenous cultures from Africa. I do want to do a whole, actually a whole episode on that, just like period, point blank. I would love to have, you know an Afro indigenous person on the podcast to talk with me about these things because you know for all tense of purposes I am a white presenting indigenous man so I do not you know I do not have the same experiences as somebody who is Afro indigenous I experienced don't get me wrong I experienced I have experienced racism and you know bigotry because of my identity and you know my heritage but that is not it's not the same thing you know so I can only say so much and relate so much and I feel like the only way we could have a proper discussion about the, uh, you know, about the appropriation and um, oppression that indigenous people from Africa and even, you know, black natives here in the United States, they face. So, um, yeah, that's something I would also love, you know, I would love to have someone on to talk with me about these things because it is an important topic that I feel needs to be addressed. With all that being said, I do think... um, Usually the way I like to do this is I like to explain who the person is. So who is Heyuani K. Trask? Heyuani K. Trask was an Hawaiian activist, author, poet, educator, and filmmaker. Specifically, she did uh, some documentaries. She served as leader of the Hawaiian Sovereignty Movement, which for those curious, the Hawaiian Sovereignty Movement is a grassroots political and cultural campaign to reestablish an autonomous uh, kingdom or independent nation of Hawaii out of a desire for sovereignty, self-determination, and self-governance. You know, I think, you know, those are all things that I think most indigenous people could stand for. So she was also a professor emeritus at the University of Hawaii, as well as a founder of the, excuse me, I did not speak it, so Kamak... Kamaku Kamaku Aukaluni Center for Hawaii Studio for Hawaiian Studies at the University of Hawaii. So you know, like I said, she she did a lot for her. She does a lot for her community. She she did a lot for her community. You know, during her time here on Earth. So you know, her activism her activism is definitely something I do want to touch on, but. You know, for now, I do want to say, you know, kind of a little bit of her background. So, uh, Heyuani Trey, uh, Jesus Christ. My notes are like all over the place. I am so sorry. 
Heyoni K. Trask was born on October 3rd, 1949 in San Francisco, California, and was born to Heyoni and Bernard Trask um, in San Francisco, California. She grew up on the, you know, Koalao side of the island of Ayahu in Hawaii. Sorry for my mispronunciations again. I do think I did Koalao pretty good, but I was not going to hit the Oahu. It's just... Um, some of her educational background, Hunani graduated from, again, I am so sorry for this, Kamehameha schools in 1967, then later attended the University of Chicago, but she transferred to the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where she completed and earned her bachelor's degree in 1972. In 1975, though, she earned her master's degree, master's degree and in 1981, a Ph.D. in political science, both also from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. You know, beyond being a college graduate and college-educated woman, like I mentioned earlier, she she was an activist, a Hawaiian, uh, Hawaiian rights activist who fought for the rights of the indigenous people of Hawaii. You know, she was very open and vocal about you know, her being anti-colonization and uh, anti-colonialism and very much anti just U.S. imperialism because it, it, they've, they've been, their land's been taken. They've been, they've been colonized the same way that they colonized the United States and the lands of the indigenous peoples here. So, you know, her being against it, that's something I could honestly stand for. And it's one of the reasons why I felt like I wanted to talk about her because of, you know, who she is and what she stood for. You know, she is credited with making a big impact on her community and peoples. You know, one example, and I guess it's less of an example because I was I was going to talk about her right now anyways, is the 1993 um, march to reclaim lands held by the state which is stolen, you know, the stolen lands that the United States is holding in quote-unquote trust. Um, Hunani Heyuani, uh, she led 15,000 Native Hawaiians on a march to the to the capital, I believe. Let's see my notes. Uh, I can't find it, but I believe it was the capital in Hawaii. Um the reason why this is so important, though, and why, you know, I said I wanted to talk about it was because it was one of the major, you know, one of the first major protests calling for the return of stolen native lands in Hawaii, you know, and, you know, she she specifically spoke. Um, she had a speech at that at that march. And I'm going to be playing a couple of moments of it in a minute, but. I did kind of want to talk about, you know, some of her, some of her film, because she, you know, Trust was a founding, you know, she, I want to talk a little bit about her career and her film history, you know, what she did with all that, because Hanani, ha, 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 yon, Hanani K. Trask was a founding member of the, again, sorry for my pronunciation, Kamakalani Center for Hawaiian Studies at the University of Hawaii. She served as its director for almost 10 years and one, and was one of its first 10 year faculty, faculty men, members. During her first time at the university, Trask largely helped to secure the building of the Gladys Bandit, uh, Kamakalakani Kalani Center for Hawaiian Studies, which would become the permanent center for Hawaiian studies at the University of Hawaii. In 2010, Trask retired from her direct her director position, but continued to teach about Native political movements in Hawaii at the Pacific. The Literature and Politics of Pacific Islander Women, Hawaiian History and Politics in the Third World, and Indigenous History and Politics as an emer Emeritus Faculty Member. Beginning in, you know, 1986, Trask, Trask hosted and produced First Friday, First Friday, a monthly public access television program that highlighted the political and cultural Hawaiian issues, you know, political issues. Trust co-wrote and co-produced the award-winning in 1993 documentary, Act of War, The Overthrow of the Hawaiian Nation. She also authored the 1993 book from a native daughter, Colonialism and Sovereignty in Hawaii, which she also, which was, 
which was described by Cynthia G. Franklin and Laura E. Lyons as a foundational text about indigenous rights, which I'm going to leave, you know, descriptions. I'm going to leave links in the description box for anybody who wants to go ahead and check out those books. Um, they are on Amazon, I believe. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and uh, go to the description and, you know, find that. Trask published two books of poetry, too, as well. She was also a poet, like I mentioned earlier. Um, the 1994 Lights in the Crevice, Never Seen, and the 2002 Night is a Shark Skin Drum. Trask developed We Are Not Happy Natives, a CD published in 2002 about Hawaiian about the Hawaiian sovereignty movement, which you could also, I'll try to link it in the description if I can personally find it. But um, the reason why I wanted to, you know, talk about these things is because, you know, it's all important. These are all things and accomplishments that she made that, you know, truly affected her community, I believe, for the better. And it is something that should be brought up and talked about. She was a remarkable woman. She was, you know, indigenous um, a Hawaiian indigenous rights activist. She, you know, fought for, you know, the lands, which is something that's honorable. And she was all about decolonization and being against, you know, American imperialism, which as in, as a Native American, I can totally get down with and stand down with. So, um, you know, with all that being said, I did, like I said, I did want to play a clip of her speech at the 1993 march so uh without further ado the full uh, uh about four minutes of the speech like i said the full speech will be down in the description box as well if you're interested in that also it just also uh i left a link in a couple of interviews because i feel if you want to learn about her you know like i'm saying these this is all valuable information that i am putting out today that you know anybody can learn because you can look her up yourself but for the most part, if you want to learn about what she stands for and who she is, you're going to have to, you know, hear it directly from her mouth and her words. She, she was not, she was not shy. She was very vocal about her opinions. So if you want to learn about her opinions, listen to the interviews and go ahead and please do, you know, your own research on her as well. Um, you know, Tras, she, she went through a lot of stuff. Trust represented, you know, Native Hawaiians at the United Nations Working Group of Indigenous People in Geneva, and in 2001 traveled to South Africa to participate in the United Nations World Conference Against Racism, racism Xenophobia, Racial Discrimination, and Other uh, Related Intolerance. In March 2017, Hawaii Magazine recognized Trask as one of the most influential women in Hawaii history. So, you know, she was for all tents and purposes, you know, a big deal when it comes down to indigenous rights and uh, indigenous activism. So, you know, if I'm going to talk about Satchin Littlefeather like I had, please go watch that episode as well. It's doing pretty well, but for the most part, please go watch it. But, you know, if I was going to talk about her, I most certainly need to talk about Trask because, like I said, she... She, you know, she was a big impact on, you know the history of Hawaii and the peoples there. So um, with all that being said, I'm going to, I'm going to be playing the, the clip. So without further ado, here you go. Do you think they can hear us now? 
You think John Waihei is listening? You think Dan Inouye is listening? How about the Office of Hawaiian Affairs? We are not American. We are not American. We are not American. We are not American. Say it in your heart. Say it when you sleep. We are not American. We will die as Hawaiians. We will never be Americans. I am here to explain what sovereignty is. Sovereignty, as many people say, is a feeling. The other day in the paper I read, sovereignty is aloha. It's love. Later on, someone said it's pride. No. Sovereignty is government. Sovereignty is government. It is an attribute of nationhood. We already have aloha. We already have pride. We already know who we are. Are we sovereign? No. Because we don't have a government. Because we don't control a land base. Sovereignty is not a feeling. It is the power of government. It is political power. It is politics. Hawaiians are always being told, especially at the university, join the Democratic Party. I am here to tell you that my grandfather helped to found the Democratic Party, and I repudiate it in front of everyone. I repudiate the Democratic Party just like I repudiate the Republicans. If the Republican Party gave us sugar, the Democrats gave us Waikiki. If the Republican Party gave us racism, the Democrats gave us another form of racism. We are not 50% Hawaiian. We are Hawaiian, period. Many years ago, the Soviet Union, now called Russia, invaded Europe and divided it up. Recently, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. The Soviet Union is no longer in Europe. Saddam Hussein has been pushed out of Kuwait. But the United States has not been pushed out of Hawaii. They invaded this place. They brought the Marines here. They took our queen. They put her in prison. Maha'oi haole, racist haole. Okay, so from everything I told you in this episode about this honorable woman, Hanani uh, K. Trask, and, you know, from her own words, from her own mouth, you can see what she stands for and what she's about. You know, she's for indigenous sovereignty. She's in for indigenous rights, self-determination, and uplifting her community. Trask held the opinion that Hawaiian uh, Native Hawaiians have to start a decolonization both politically and mentally by reconnecting themselves to their nations. You know, and that's also something that she stood for. She believes that indigenous people should be political. They should learn about politics and learn how to talk political because, you know, that's the only way in this current, in, in the current climate that we have in this world that we're going to survive. We need to be able to hold our own when talking about politics, you know? So, you know, I do think that's something that, which, you know, Hanani held a lot of virtues and feelings and opinions that I feel more of us need to take up because, you know, I do truly feel it would impact our communities for the better as indigenous peoples. Um, with all that being said and done, I want to say thank you so much for, you know, listening to this episode. It was researching indigenous icons is you're going to be one of the more difficult episodes I'm going to be doing on this podcast because, you know, it is hard to find. It's hard to separate the bullshit from the realness because when it comes to Hawaiian, um, when it comes to Hawaiian, when it comes down to indigenous activists, there is a lot of smear campaigns and a lot of articles out there that try to make them look bad. So when you're trying to learn about the history of a certain individual, you really need to fact check and make sure you're doing everything that, you know, you need to do to make your research and whether you're writing a paper, or producing a video or making a podcast, um, is sufficient and, you know, you're not spreading any false information, any false 
um, propaganda and rhetoric that could harm the individual you're speaking about. So, you know, that was something that I do wanted, I wanted to mention a tiny bit at the end of this episode. Also, um, I do have, uh, my, the podcast does have an official Twitter, I mean, official Instagram page. Somebody asked me about that, but it is not active, nor is it running. I do not have the password at the moment. I'll try to get that in the future, but you know, for now, the only socials I do have is Twitter. I have two Twitter pages. I have my Huska Smin Aitian, which is my main page, you know, um, lowercase, lowercase H-U-S-K-A, uppercase S, lowercase M-I-N, I, uppercase T, lowercase H-I-N-E, and please go ahead and follow the official podcast Twitter page at TCN Pod, capital T-C-N-P, lowercase O-D, and, um, I do run a safe space community where, you, where, you know, indigenous people, Afro-indigenous people, and black natives can congregate to discuss topics relevant to their communities. Um, I am taking a break from it for a minute. I was running it for like five months straight since I created it. So I needed, I needed a little break from it. One, just to get some life done stuff because, you know, I have a lot of stuff going on in my life at this very moment and I needed to deal with that. And also, I am producing this podcast, so it is, like, it's a little hard to, you know, be hosting and uh, moderating a, you know, I have, there's multiple space, I hold multiple spaces, I have uh, a subreddit, and I have a, um, I forget what the other one I have, I have a Discord page, I have for the safe, for the safe space community, Hetway Hut, yeah, which means free sport, uh, free forest in Mutsun. Um, you know, it is a lot to try to do both at once. So once the podcast goes on a break, I will continue to do the safe space and go back to, you know, dealing with that. But for now, this is what I'm doing. So, um, with all that being said, thank you so much for listening to this podcast episode. If you liked it, Please like, subscribe, and share. Please also comment down below. You know, comments always help. Uh, helps get the podcast into the algorithm. Um, and, you know, that's pretty much it for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.